This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. This is part one of graphing cosine functions, such as y equals cosine of x and y equals negative cosine of x. These are two we're going to do on this graph. It's a good idea if you've already watched my series of videos on graphing the sine function. So one way of graphing um, anything is by making up a table of ordered pairs. All right, so I I've picked some values for x, okay, that go from 0 to 2 pi. And the reason I did that is because if, uh, if we look at the unit circle, what happens is, remember, that if you have any length on the unit circle, let's say you wanted to know what the cosine of pi over 4 is, you see the ordered pair here, and the x-coordinate is defined to be the cosine of pi over 4. And what happens after you get all the way around to 2 pi, it just starts repeating itself. Okay, so let's just look at these x-coordinates for each of these values of x. So when x is 0, the x-coordinate is 1. When x is pi over 4, the x-coordinate is square root of 2 over 2. That's irrational, but we can approximate that to 0.7. At pi over 2, up here, the x-coordinate is 0. At 3 pi over 4, the x-coordinate is negative square root of 2 over 2, so that is approximately negative 0.7. By the way, you don't need to use the unit circle to figure these out. You could use triangles, um, you know, any, you could maybe have memorized all the values for the cosine of all these values. I'm just doing it on this picture. All right, what about the cosine of pi? We're over here at negative 1. And going around, cosine of 5 pi over 4, that is negative 0.7 approximately. And at 3 pi over 2, we're at 0. 7 pi over 4, we're at, we're at the positive value again, so that's positive 0.7. And at 2 pi, we were at 1 again, right? Same as it was for 0. Now, by the way, notice when you're looking at the unit circle, what's going on to the x values as you go around the unit circle. The x coordinate is 1. Now it's at 0.7, here it's 0. That's because you're going to the left, right? You're, when you go around the unit circle, you're kind of moving to the left until you get to negative 1, and then you kind of move into the right again, which is what happened here for the cosine. Started at 1, got smaller, smaller until you got to negative 1, and then it got bigger and bigger until you got to positive 1 again. So let's take these eight, these, uh, I think there's nine ordered pairs here, and let's plot them on a graph. All right, so here are, here, here's our table. Here's a graph. Now, it's important that you label the x-axis and the y-axis because they're not necessarily going to be consistent. For the y values, we notice it goes between negative 1 and 1, so I'm going to put only <coughs> the value where negative 1 and 1 is. I wouldn't want to put the same labels for 1 um, on the x-axis because on the x-axis, I've done things in terms of pi, right? And so how about, since I have pi over 4, pi over 2, I'm going to say that after 4, this is pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, that would be pi right here, 4n. And that would be 2 pi. And for instance, this, that won't be uh, 3 pi, but this is enough to get an idea. So let's go ahead and, and graph this now. We have 0, 1. So we have 0, 1. We have pi over 4, about 0.7. All right, we're going to sketch it. So it's approximately right here. Pi over 2, 0, we're down here at 0. 3 pi over 4 is negative 0.7, that's about right here. At pi, we're at negative 1. At 5 pi over 4, we're at negative 0.7, it's about right here. 3 pi over 2 is 0. And uh, 7 pi over 4 is 0.7 again, and we're up here. Hmm. It's kind of interesting. Now, we know this kind of keeps going, right, as you go around the unit circle. So if you did some more, if you did um, 9 pi over 4, you would get this ordered pair, this ordered pair, 
assorted pair, etc. And if we went on to the left, kept going, we would get these ordered pairs. So I'm going to say that you can go ahead and do more ordered pairs to see what's going on. And this ends up, be very, ends up being very curvy, just like the sine graph. In fact, it looks almost exactly like the sine graph, but they're going through different ordered pairs. And so you have to sketch this very carefully. I started sketching. Here's how I do it. I just draw a little tiny line at a time. See how I'm doing this? Etc. So if there were no x and y coordinates and all you saw was this thing, it looks exactly the same as a um, the sine graph, all right? So a sine wave, basically. Okay, but it repeats after p 2 pi units. So we start up at 0, 1, and it ends up here at 0, 1, then it starts again. So notice what's going, going on if we look at just between here and here. It starts up, it kind of goes down, and then back up again. Okay, then it goes down, it's going to go back up again. And we say this is one cycle. So, of the, of the um, cosine graph, so we say the period, remember the period we talked about, we did the sine functions, is 2 pi. Now, what about the domain? The domain are the values that x takes on, and x, you can put anything you want in for x, there's no restrictions, so the domain is in between negative infinity and infinity. And what about the range? That's from the, the very lowest and the highest number, for instance, in this particular graph. It goes in between negative 1 and 1. So the range, and it actually touches negative 1, so we have negative 1 and 1. Now remember the amplitude. It's defined the same way as for the sine graph. It's half the distance from the bottom to the top, and that's going to be 1. So the amplitude's going to be 1. So this is a sketch of y equals cosine of x, where the period, I'm going to write that down here, the period is 2 pi. The domain, negative infinity to infinity, you see the range, and the amplitude. Now what if we wanted to graph y equals negative cosine of x? What would happen to all of these y values? they would be the opposite because you'd multiply all these values by negative 1. So what would that look like? All right, so in red we have the graph of y equals cosine of x, and so the question is, what if now we want to do y equals negative cosine of x? So if I know what the cosine of x is, which are, was already down here, all of these will be the opposite values. So we will have, instead of 1, we will have negative 1. So have negative 1, negative 0.7, of course this is approximately, right? If pi over 2 was 0, remember the x value, this will be approximately positive 0.7. And at pi, it's actually going to be at 1, because it was originally negative 1, now it's going to be positive 1, etc. And so we could try filling out the rest of those values yourself, and then try graphing it. Put the video on pause for a second, and then you'll be able to see the answer. All right, I hope these are the approximate values you're going to get. So we could graph 0, negative 1, right? That'd be down here. And then we have pi over 4 will be negative 0.7, so it'll be down here. Pi over 2 is 0, same as that one. 3 pi over 4 is 0.7, etc. So you could see how you could start doing it, or you could just take all the ordered pairs on this graph and you're going to flip it across the uh, x-axis. That's another way to do it. So if it's down up here, it's up over here. If it's down here, it's up over here, etc. And so you should be able to plot these ordered pairs. Get a pretty good sketch. And just make sure you round it. It's not pointy at all. So this blue graph is y equals negative 
the cosine of x so you could see the difference. Now that we've done this, we usually only care about the five main values here, which are for, the, for y equals cosine of x. Let's go back up to that one. So if we're doing y equals cosine of x, the important parts are right here. So if you get that, you can get an idea. So let's say I had just done that. I did the 0, 1, and then we're going to pi over t 0, pi negative 1, 3 pi over 2, 0, and 2 pi up at 1. These are called our five key points. All right, so to summarize, here's the graph of y equals cosine of x. Here are our five key points. You could either put it in a chart. You can list them as ordered pairs. You could actually label them on your graph. For instance, this ordered pair. Whoops, sorry. There we go. This ordered pair right here is 0, 1. For instance, you can go and do that. Sometimes it gets kind of crowded on your graph to do that, though. Okay. So we'll be using this, these key, five key points to do some more problems. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.